Oh, hello everyone. I'm Noni, one of the GPs in this North London surgery. As you can see, we're um, getting ready to start seeing patients and, and telephone and triage patients uh, uh, with the coronavirus. Uh, you can see that I have my uh, masks here, I have my gloves, the thermometer is on as well. And I'm just looking at this guideline here about a letter to support allied health professionals and allied health professional support workers during the COVID-19 epidemic in the UK. Now, I'm not going to say much more about coronavirus because there's a lot of information out there. Rather, I just want to alert people, especially the media, to a new disease which they have caused, which I am going to call Mediana. Now, Mediana is, from what I see, caused by the effects of the way the media, most of the media is reporting on the coronavirus. I just like to ask the media to be cautious in exaggerating the effect of this disease. We know that there is a death rate of 2-3% to and most people that get the illness, 4 out of 5, which is 80%, will recover. And so they need to emphasize that fact and stop scaring people. Yesterday, I had a number of calls I had to, to make to patients and many of them I now realize are becoming quite unwell, not from the coronavirus at all, but actually from the effects of listening to the news about the coronavirus. And so I had one lady yesterday who's never had any problems with her blood pressure, who now had blood pressure readings of over 170 for the systolic on three occasions, all because she's been listening to the news. And I simply told her to stop listening, to only listen once a day. I also have another lady, a young mother who was absolutely fine in herself, but now had shortness of breath just by listening to the news. And she told this to me when she brought her seven month old baby yesterday for me to examine because he was a little bit unwell and I wanted to just check on him in person. I've also had another patient who's had recently had an increase in her antidepressants and who I've been trying to manage and get stable, who's now panicking, now wants to increase her antidepressants because she's worried about the virus. And the last person I want to talk about today, because there are several of them, is a mother who has only one child, as a boy. He went and had a burger and some ice cream, and then he now um, developed a cough or run, which is not unusual for this time of the year in the UK anyway. And, and she now uh, was told, oh, he has a cough, he has a cough, and everyone was panicking, and she was scared, am I going to lose my only son? And I think with all this, these patients are patients who I know quite well. There's been nothing wrong with them in the past per se. I mean, they're fairly, they're not even in the high risk category, but they become more unwell just by listening to the news. And so I just want to urge caution to all our media uh, providers uh, to, to just give us the facts and remember to tell people that actually many of them will do well and the children seem almost invincible, as one colleague said, from this illness. And the other thing I want to say is to appeal to people to stop listening to the news in such large amounts. Obviously, we need to keep up to date and find out what's going on, and I do that, but I only do it very, very, uh, just once a day at the minute because the news reporting is too exaggerated at the minute and it's playing on people's fears. Aliana, do you listen to the news yourself? No. No, I, you're, you're, I have to say you're very sensible because otherwise you're going to end up being really, really scared. And so while I'm not saying we shouldn't find out what's going on, I'm only saying let's listen to reputable uh, 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 broadcasts which do not play on people's fear. Thank you for listening and God bless you and keep you safe.